What's up, everyone? This is all Destroyer 229. Welcome back to Let's Play Persona 5. Really hard to do intros in safe rooms. Last time, we began our exploration of Madarame's Museum in order to try to find the treasure hidden within. We haven't really gotten too far. In fact, this is just the first safe room that we've come across. So we really have a long way to go before we get anywhere near the treasure. In this episode... All right, let's do this. We are going to get back on the trail and get ever... Hi. Get ever closer to the treasure. Now, as we're going through the palace, it is just about time to once again go into one of my world-famous history lessons. All we have right, quite a few yes. things that we I'll need to go over. Force. Which we will get into after we take care of these girl poke gurus. Okay, so these guys are weak to fire. Could just wait until Panther. Sakami Tama. No, I have Wapo now. Um, well, I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere close to Tarunda. Although Resist Dizzy also isn't exactly all that great, so. Wapo it is! Go ahead and pass the baton to Panther. And hopefully she can take care of that one. Damn. Oh well. Time to kill him! Overall, not really all that bad. Alright. So we have quite a few history lessons that we still need to go over. And we'll have about time to do one, maybe two, over the course of the palace. Ooh, a straw doll. I want to say, is that a moo doll? A medium chance of dealing curse insta-kill. Oh, okay, that's Moodoon. Wow, okay. So, we are going to go over the history lesson for Morgana's persona. Caped Crusader Zoro. Show me your true form. Okay. So Zoro. Zoro is. It's close enough to strike. Zoro is a fictional character who was created in 1919 by a man named Johnston McCulley. His name it means fox in Spanish. I'll reveal your true form. Ooh, new pers- or new shadows. I mean, they will be a new persona. The corpse bird. Uh, well, I can try this. Aha! I like the- it still does a decent amount of damage because it is still a critical hit. I want to say these guys are weak to fire, though. So, we'll just hit the other one with an onk. No, they resist fire. Well, damn it. Um... Whoops. Uh, okay, well, fire's not gonna do any good. Um, ice? Well, ice is effective. Oh! Thank you, Skull! This is an example of a follow-up attack. Go get him! Thank you, Skull! Okay, so this shadow is gloomy, so I gotta keep that in consideration. Shut up! Don't. Yeah. Ah, damn it. Here you go. 
Yeah, so unfortunately we didn't exactly do all that well. Ooh, we get a soul drop though. That's actually not bad in terms of a free item. We're done here. Let's go. Bit unfortunate yeah, though, but victory. oh well. Alright. So Zoro is a masked vigil ante who resides in Spanish California from around 1770s to the 1820s. Uh, more specifically, he resides around Pueblo de los Angeles. So basically where LA is I'll today. Your true form. Being a vigilante, Zoro often takes the law into his own hands, but he does so in order to protect commoners and natives from corrupt officials and outlaws that seek to take advantage of them. Ooh, I see treasure over there, and that treasure is mine! Okay. Originally appearing in the book The Curse of Capistrano in 1919, Zoro has appeared in quite a number of stories, specifically five novels and 57 short stories, spanning between 1919 to 1959. However, his popularity didn't surge until there were film adaptations of these stories, starting with the movie based on the Curse of Capistrano in 1920, and then even more prominently by the version made by Disney in 1957. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that was actually something that I could take. Alright, let's open up this shortcut. I typically like to at least go through the doors at least once. <laughs> Just to make sure that they stay open. Now, in terms of Zoro himself, Zoro was born as Don Diego de la Vega. He's the son of a man named Don Alejandro de la Vega who was considered the wealthiest man in California. Hmm. And go ahead and steal this. Now, Diego lives in an hacienda, which is a sort of mansion, for lack of a better word. But Diego himself was kind of a fop, whereas Zorro was quite the dashing gentleman. Now, in terms of appearance, Zoro primarily wore all black, usually seen with a black cloak and a black flat brim hat called a sombrero uh, codobes, along with wearing a black mask that covered the top part of his face. Uh, his preferred weapon of choice was a rapier, in which case he could leave his signature Z to basically kind of act as a calling card, or just a way of showing that he was there. And alongside him was his black steed, Tornado. And the reason why I haven't been going forward so much is, well, plot-related stuff. Because we can just walk right past this, except that we can't. Uh, that's not what we came here for. Mona? Whoa! Wait! Crap, it's a pressure plate! <laughs> Everyone, stand back! Come on.
You got it. Hang tight, guys. It, Mona. So yeah. now we are completely separated from our party for the time being. And there are also enemies here, so we've got to be careful as well. Now, in terms of the Focus. history lesson, um, concerning the story of Zoro, similar to Arsene, trying to go over every single story of Zoro would be way too much from what we are going to be able to cover. So instead, I'm just going to go over the synopsis for Zoro's first tale. The Curse of Capistrano. Crap! Show me your true form. That's all work. Although, we are by ourselves. So that's a problem. What isn't a problem is the fact that I have Absaris. Unfortunately, since we are by ourselves, we can't even uh, interrogate any sort of enemy, so there's not much we can do. Thankfully, there's not much that we have to do. Also, it's one of the few times that we'll probably see the solo animation for a victory. Because even if you have one other party member, you'll still get the group uh, victory animation. Because there, I believe this is the only time in the game in which you are forced to be in a battle by yourself. But hello. Press the button. Yes. Alright, well at least we got Panther. Okay, so now we just need to regroup with her. Hey, Panther. Seriously, thank you. Okay, so at the very least, now we have backup. Although, ooh, what is that I see before mine eyes? Well, something that we can't exactly have access to. Uh, however... Um... Actually, I think we... What do we get over there? Somewhere. Hmm. I'm actually trying to remember how exactly we need to do this. I think we head on over here. Yes, because this gets us back to the beginning portion. Or we can just drop down here. This works too. Focus. Uh, however, we it. did see... Oh, hey, there are even footprints here. Well, isn't that convenient? Why don't we move this thing out of the way, then? Makes sense, though. Yeah! Alright, now Skull is free. So let's regroup with him. Hey, Skull. Sorry. All right, so that's what we've got to do now. We need to turn off these lasers in order to free Mona. And, ooh, uh, unfortunately, I mean, there is a room back there, but unfortunately, the lasers are back up. It. However, <gasps> eh, there is something right over here. Assuming I can climb this. There's an air duct here. Whoa. Wait. As I was saying... 
Those two. Anyway. Hey, what's that? This door was locked beforehand, but there is a computer over here. Yeah. Worth a shot. Then we should probably find the password then. Last thing we need is for it locking out us locking us out. No. That'd be our only option then. So now we need to be able to find where this password is. Although. Well, I was gonna hide there anyway, but thanks, game. Good in theory, go. Oh, bo ba ba. That one? Wanna get it? I don't think it's necessary to fight him, so let's just go over here and activate the terminal. Yeah. Nice. Right, so now we gotta do is just pick up Mona. Perfect. Sorry. Don't, you know, trip the security again. Let's take a look. Huh? What the? Wait! Ah, I thought I would get another. I get, thought I'd get a chance immediately. I'm sorry about that, but. We have access to rare enemies. I'm not done. So rare enemies, they function somewhat similarly to three and four, in which you will find them randomly and they will be very beneficial to you. They are worth a lot of gold and a lot of experience. However, these aren't just normal enemies. These are potential personas as well. Come. So what we want to do is to try to actually get this. I don't remember what the first one is weak to. I want to say it's darkness. Now resist darkness. That isn't good. Um. Crap. I... I'm not sure I actually have anything that could actually... Kill this thing very quickly. 
Uh, if it wasn't darkness, then it's probably nuclear, and I do not have a nuclear persona. Well, crap. Um... I'm wondering if I could maybe hit it with a status ailment, since rare enemies will run away if you don't kill them fast enough. Uh, I'm trying to think... And there's Ice Break, but that's not exactly that helpful. Ah, crap. I may as well just stick with attacking as much as I can. Crap. Um... I may as well just stick with Opsaris then. Uh, rare enemies don't exactly last all that long. There we go! Perfect! Okay, that's what I was hoping for. So, what we can do with this enemy is that we can just go for an all-out attack, kill it, and get a lot of money and experience. But, it is always worth it to talk to them. By talking to them, you will automatically recruit them. And now we have Regent. Ah, oh, no one actually spoke. So yeah, we got a lot of experience for that. No money because we didn't kill it, but they do leave thousands of yen upon being defeated. It is always worth it to take down rare enemies whenever you find them. So, you will occasionally run into treasure demons whenever you steal any particular item. They will be represented by that corrupted ruby that you see right there. They can appear more often the higher the security level is, but you can just encounter them normally even if the security level is at zero. And it is always worth killing them considering how much experience points and money that you get. And you can recruit them as we just did. However, they cannot be used in battle. They are only useful for fusion fodder. It's still important to get them because you can't get them normally and they are part of the compendium. So, if we take a look at Regent, we can see that gem icon. That indicates that it is a treasure demon. But, take a look at everything. Oh, it's, it was also weak to PSI as well. But, Regent knows the Ma skills for every elemental attack. Maragi, Mabufu, Magaru, Mazio, Ma PSI, Ma Frey, Ma Koha, and Maeha. So, this is extremely good for fusion fodder because if a persona can inherit that type of element, we can just give it a Ma skill. So, like I said, incredibly helpful types of personas to have and you can only get them through recruiting them. Very different from how the game usually works in which they're usually just unique personas for fusions but not for battles. Treasure demons are the exact opposite. Focus. Uh, okay. Uh, ooh, I can no way it. to get across that. Um. <laughs> now you think, what, is it an invisible trail or something like that? Do I have to follow a certain pattern? Nah, the floor is just a painting. I'll reveal your true form. All right. So yeah, not exactly that big of a deal. 
Now, as to our history lesson. Also, there are bathrooms here. <sighs> Don't worry, we're in the metaverse. It's not like it matters. <laughs> so yeah, we can just go into that, and we can also head on into the ladies' room. Cut it out! But there's treasure! Like, legitimate treasure! Okay, so we get an ice ring, which... Does that give a resistant? No, reduces ice damage. Um, okay. I guess I can give that to... Mona. Evade curse. We're not exactly finding many enemies that can curse us. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Now, like I was saying... Somewhere. The actual story portion of the history lesson is primarily just going to be going over the curse of Capistrano. Uh, but before that, this would be a fantastic place to utilize a safe room. Oh, a new safe room. So now we can get back here very quickly, which is good because we're full on our Persona deck. It would be probably a good idea to go and start to fuse a few more. Well. Before we do that, though, let's get a grasp on the situation. And that is pretty much everything. Shall we go? So I am going to head back to the museum entrance and head into the velvet room. So I will see you guys when I decide to view something. For some reason, I always find this persona to be hard to get. It's not like it's really that difficult, but I personally have trouble getting it. So we're going to make it now. So we are fusing away Slime and Barreth in order to fuse Kodama. Choose the inherited skills, inmate. If I can use it enough, I can get PSI, and that would be very good because I freaking need to flush out my elements. Uh, I'll pass down Aha just so I can keep having darkness, and uh, it's not exactly great in terms of physical attack. Uh, so I'll just give it Rodaku Kaja. Its power will be nothing. Unusual. We haven't established the star confidant, but oh well. <laughs> I see. I need more space, so sure, why the heck not? So we are fusing away Saki Mitama and McCoy in order to fuse Kopa Tengu. Choose the inherited skills, inmate. Not really a whole lot. We could give it growth one, but its next skill is also crap. And since we haven't established the temperance confidant, we can't exactly do much with him anyway. So we will just pass down Augie and Bufu because I always prefer unusual. just passing down more elemental spells. Now for a rebirth. And just like that, we are it? done with our Persona Fusions for the time being. Freed up a little extra space, so we should be okay. good for the time being. Now to actually get into the Curse of Capistrano. So, back to the history lesson. 
So the curse of Capistrano begins in a tavern with a man named... I can see it. Just making sure I don't activate any tripwires. With a man named Sergeant Gonzalez, who is boasting that he could pretty much take on Zoro and kill him. While he's boasting this to anyone who will listen to him, uh, Diego comes in and has a short conversation with the sergeant, but he doesn't really want to talk about Zoro. He kind of doesn't really care all that much. Diego then leaves, only for Zoro himself to show up shortly afterward. Uh, Zoro then tries to put uh, the sergeant in his place, and he duels the sergeant in a bit of an illegal duel. I have something. Uh, gotta be careful here. Oh, I think the monitors are actually speaking, which is rather interesting. I didn't think they did, but I guess they do. Uh-oh. Show me your true form. Zoro, however, leaves before the authorities get there because A, he's a wanted man, and B, it's an illegal duel. So he can't exactly stay there. Gotcha! I'll reveal your true form. Who's next? Hmm, nice work, team. Hey! It's a step forward. Extra money from having a shadow bank for its life, and I leveled up. Awesome! So, after Zoro is kind of forced to leave, uh, Gonzalez basically boasts that, Oh, I defeated the great Zoro. I am the best around. And uh, Diego kind of comes back in, though, and kind of puts him in his place. Kind of in a more sarcastic manner, more than anything. But, yeah, he kind of subtly bowed badmouths the sergeant. Diego then goes to... Pulido Hacienda, which is definitely seen some better days. Look, a treasure chest. Where there's a treasure what waiting for us. Physical ointment. Now, in actuality, Azor goes to Pulido Hacienda in order to court a noble woman, a lesser noble woman, but still of noble blood, named Senorita Lolita. Um. Diego, being Diego, doesn't exactly get how courting is supposed to work, and feels as though his wealth would be enough to convince Lolita it. in order to marry him. Which obviously doesn't work. She's very much unimpressed by Diego, who she can tell doesn't really care all that much, and he's not exactly that... Well... I can feel it. That great of a guy in her eyes. However, later that day, Zoro shows up and is quite charming towards the young noblewoman. Um, Lolita kind of protests whenever he tries flattering her, but she actually very much enjoys it and very much falls head over heels for Zoro. Crap. Let's get some breathing room first. Oh, wow. What? Okay. Um, I have never seen an instance where a shadow begged for its life while another shadow was still alive. I'll take it. Because that's a free shadow. And now we got Onmoraki. Cool. 
I kind of botched that up, but it all worked out perfectly in the end. I'll take it. Ooh, sweet, a new skill. Adverse Resolve. Kind of meh. Increases the chance of dealing critical hits whenever we are surrounded. There is going to be very few instances in which we will actually be surrounded, so I don't really find it that useful of a skill. All right. Let me actually hide and get a little bit more of my history lesson. Uh, so later that day, after Zoro leaves the noblewoman, uh, a man named Captain Ramon makes advances on the woman. Um, Lolita rebuffs him because the only man that she has eyes for is Zoro. And she really doesn't care much for the captain. Anytime. Or Diego, but for Diego, it distance. was for uh, obviously and I'll very your true form. different reasons. Beautiful Rose has and oh, right, I'm sorry, it's leveled up too. I was gonna say, and unsurprisingly, Mona follows suit. All right. That enemy was really okay, weak. Okay. Well, there was that more powerful enemy, so let's get him to spawn and hide while I continue my story. So, do 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 do. Where was I? Anytime. Just watch your distance. Trying to look at my notes and making sure this guy doesn't see us. I don't think he can see us though. Uh, screw it. Let's just finish this. Show me your true form. Their weakness, Panther. So this is what constitutes a really powerful enemy, huh? Leave no survivors. Okay. So that wasn't bad. Thankfully, I managed to get one of them on my side so I actually see that they were weak to guns. And we get an exorcism water. You might be wondering, well, what the heck are we supposed to do? Well, you can probably see right there. But I have a story to tell, and we are getting pretty low on time, and I'd like to finish my damn story. So, after this bit of trying to court uh, the Pulido daughter, uh, Diego invites the Politos to his hacienda. And just as a way to build friendly relations with the, well, the elders. Uh, that night, Ramon tries to use force on Lolita in order for, well, to persuade her to go to him. However, Zoro comes to her rescue. Uh, Ramon, however, uses this as an excuse in order to tell the governor that the Politos were not only rude to him, but also were accomplices of Zoro, who, I should remind you, is a wanted criminal. He's a vigilante. He's wanted by the law. Uh, Zoro confronts Ramon whenever he is writing this letter to the governor, but soldiers find them. Gonzalez, the sergeant from the bar, uh, pursues Zoro, since Zoro obviously needs to escape. And he thinks that he is heading on over to Frey Philippe's mission. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a mission is kind of like a church, for lack of a better word, in order to just put it very simply. Uh, when they reach Felipe's mission, though, all they find is the priest Felipe and Diego. No sign of Zoro anywhere. Hey. Think there's something behind it? Hmm. This is... I mean, this is not the first time they pulled this trick.
push. that we're getting relatively close to another safe room because we are pretty much out of time and I still have quite a lot to go in my story uh ooh, actually we've reached our destination now that I think about it um hmm well I suppose this can serve as a pretty good backdrop so let's go ahead and head over this way Um... We should just listen to him. Although that shouldn't kick us out. No, it doesn't. Good. I was gonna say, because I'm pretty sure the game will force you to go down this pathway before actually, like, going over there, because that's a safe room. However, this actually gets me a chance to, you know, finish my story with a very pretty and very gaudy background. So anyway, back to my story. So after that instance at Felipe's mission, uh, do, 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 where was I? Ah, yes. So Diego then returns home in order to inform of his father about his uh, Failings in order to court Lolita. Alejandro isn't exactly pleased with his son and threatens to sell the estate if Diego isn't married within the next three months. Basically denying Diego, you know, an inheritance of a giant what's equivalent to a mansion. So, yeah, Diego doesn't exactly have that much time to find a girl to marry. Not too long after, the governor receives Ramon's letter, and he heads to Los Angeles in order to deal with it. He then, upon arriving, arrests the Polidos, Senor, Senora, and Lolita. Zoro then meets with some... Uh, or my notes, because I can't actually say this off the top of my head. Caballeros, which he made a deal with earlier at his father's estate in order to rescue the Politos. The Caballeros, yeah, just think of them as young men, like rowdy young men type of thing. They pull off an escape mission in order to rescue the Politos, and they are successful in rescuing them. 
However, they are surrounded and then, once they escape, are pursued by soldiers. Zoro manages to give them a slip long enough for him to drop Lolita off at Felipe's mission. Gonzalez, however, pursues Lolita. However, when he has her surrounded, she threatens suicide if she isn't allowed to leave. Gonzalez lets her go, since he doesn't want to see her die. And he's even kind enough to give her his horse, which is very nice of him. Zoro, after dropping Lolita off, goes to the governor who happens to be with Ramon. And he forces Ramon to confess that his letters were falsehoods. That the Politos had nothing to do with Zoro. Zoro then forces Ramon into a fight, specifically a duel. And as a conclusion, Zoro kills Ramon. After he leaves though, Zoro is pursued once again by soldiers, and he manages to find Lolita, who is also being pursued by soldiers. They then hide in a tavern in order to try to lose the trail. Well, try to have the soldiers lose the trail, but it doesn't work, and it's not long before the two of them are surrounded. However, not long afterward, Zoro's caballeros arrive, and the governor sees that all of them are from very wealthy families. Families that he really shouldn't mess with. So, he submits to their demands in order to let Zoro and Lolita go. When, Aleja when Alejandro arrives, however, he kind of has more demands, and since he is the richest man within California, the governor once again complies with his demand and declares that Zoro is a free man. Upon hearing this, Zoro and Lolita leave the tavern, and since he's no longer a wanted criminal, Zoro removes his mask and reveals to everyone present that he is indeed Diego. At the story's conclusion, Diego explains how he was able to put up such a farce for so long that he was able to keep Zoro as a secret identity, and how exactly he was able to trick everyone. And at the very end, Lolita agrees to marry Diego, the true Zoro. That is the tale of Zoro. Now, to be honest, the continuity within Zoro is a bit weird because, well, there's not really any consistency. Later stories concerning Zoro have him, well, keep his secret identity so no one knows it's actually Diego and Ramon is alive still. So there's differing accounts of continuity within the different Zoro stories, but it also was never really meant to become a series. The popularity just kind of blew up after the movie, and the writer just decided to make more stories, since that was what popular and that was what people wanted to read. So he continued writing them until he died in 1958, with the last story being published posthum posthumously in 1959. So, now that I've basically just spent the next last, what, five, ten minutes just reading my notes and trying to get through that story, we now have access to this safe room so we can get back here whenever we want to. However, this is as far as we can get. We cannot get past this point in the palace until we head back to the real world and wait another day. Again. This is exactly why you do not want to wait until the last possible minute before starting to infiltrate a palace. Because if you decide to wait, oh, let's wait until the last two days, since we need to wait two days. No. No, you need three. 
So yeah, don't don't ever put off infiltrating palaces to the last minute. Don't ever do that. You're gonna have a bad time if you do that. At any rate, we're good to call it a day here. So, next time on Let's Play Persona 5. We leave the palace in order to find a way to open that door. Morgana has a plan, but we'll just have to see what exactly that plan is once we leave the palace. So, we'll see what exactly he has in store. And with any luck, we'll be able to get through and continue our infiltration. So until next time, everyone, take care.